I'm Danielle. Welcome to my living room. I know I've mentioned before that my bookshelf isn't really anything to write home about, but I think that this bookshelf tour video is like a booktuber rite of passage, <laughs> so I think I should do one. And I know it's not going to be too long because I only have so many books, but uh, I can tell you that every book on this shelf was purchased deliberately and it's there for a reason. So. Oh, my glasses are really reflective today. So yeah, let's take a look. So here's a little overview of the entire shelf. Uh, the shelf itself I got from Ikea like eight years ago when I first moved into my own place. And it's moved with me like six times since then. So a lot of meaning behind this trustworthy little shelf. So we'll start over here. Uh, first, I've just got a couple of random books behind my little gourds, just My Sister's Keeper and Wild, which I've just had for quite a few years, and not for any particular reason, really. Uh, over here, we've got my um, mass market paperbacks shelf. Uh, I've got a couple of classic, Rebecca, um, a few of my husband's books. I've read this one, I think, but not these ones yet. Um, same with the Arthur C. Clarke. It's just a random Arthur C. Clarke book called The Songs of Distant Earth. Nice 80s cover there. <laughs> um, it was a fun book, though. And Brandon Sanderson I haven't read yet, but I am reading Mistborn right now. I'm listening to the audiobook. And then just a couple. I've got World War Z, The Goldfinch. These are discards from the library, so they're kind of in rough shape. And I got them for 25 cents each. Oh, and it's a nice 34% humidity in here. It's not actually 22.8 degrees. This is kind of, it's a little bit off. Moving down to my mostly fantasy shelf, I've got Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I just read them like six months ago and I sort of fell in love. But this is really disappointing. When I ordered them, I thought that I had ordered Six of Crows with the black edging and then Crooked Kingdom with the red and they sent me this one so sad i realized after that it was my mistake i ordered the wrong one but still um where the crowd had sing i got it was donated to the library so i got this copy for like two dollars i think that's why i have that <laughs> um i got in every stone by camilla shamsi i read during my university degree and i kept it chilcote and rose this is a cool book um, it's about a Canadian from British Columbia called Mary Kerner. My husband used to go to her fishing resort up, up in kind of Bella Coola area of BC. Really cool woman. She lived in the wilderness for like years. Um, literally like no running water, no electricity. She hauled her own firewood and stuff like that. Very cool woman. Worth reading about for sure. Um, Once Upon the River I also got for like two bucks from the library. And then we have the His Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman. These were really meaningful to me when I was a kid. I read them over and over again. They were probably more meaningful to me than Harry Potter, if only because they were much less popular so I could kind of enjoy them um, in my own little bubble. But yeah, those were a big deal to me when I was a kid. The Alchemist, which uh, is kind of an unusual book, but oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? The inside's pretty beautiful, too. <laughs> if you've only read The Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, I highly recommend, or if you read them and you thought they were like a little bit long-winded, or I've heard some people call them pretentious, I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're wonderful. But <laughs> if you want something a little bit shorter and a little bit more, I guess, small-scale, I recommend this little regard of silent things. It's just a beautiful little story of enjoying the quiet. Yeah, it's a great book. <laughs> now I've got my Prince of Thorns, you know, Mark Lawrence trilogy. I snapped these up. Like, I enjoyed reading them, and I thought, oh, my husband should read these. I think he'd like them too. And um, I noticed that we only had a couple copies left at my library, so I was like, oh, I wonder what's going on there. Uh, maybe I should suggest that they buy more because that's like, that's a thing at my library. So I went to suggest it and I, so I was looking on like Barnes and Noble and Chapters, Indigo, their website, and I saw that they were low on stock and I was wondering like, 
I wonder if they went out of print or if they're going out of print, at least, you know, temporarily. So I just bought them <laughs> just to make sure that they could be read again. I really enjoyed this series. Um, then we got some Robin Hobb. Now moving down to my mostly sci-fi shelf. Actually, I think I've got it all sci-fi right now. Good for me. <laughs> so we've got Children of Time, Adrian Tchaikovsky. This kind of made me fall in love with Adrian Tchaikovsky. Uh, fantastic space opera, super sci-fi book. Um, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I've actually only read these two. I haven't read Acceptance yet, but I just love how weird and sort of psychological Annihilation is. So I've got that. Um, the Martian. Oh, here's my, this is where I store my bookmarks that are not in use. Just got a little pile there. Um, yeah, Ender's Game, Neuromancer, which my husband kind of made me read. <laughs> not a bad book. I just, this is the book that made me realize that I don't really like a lot of jargon, um, in my, in my sci-fi. Some classic, um, 80s sci-fi, 90s maybe, um, <laughs> Jumper and Reflex. The movie Jumper from like 2000, whatever that was, is based on this book, but they took some huge creative liberties with the movie. Um, I still enjoyed it. Yeah, Scion, classic like 80s random <laughs> sci-fi book. It was one of the first sci-fis I think I ever read. I probably read it when I was like 14 or something. Uh, Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Novelle. I have not read the rest of the series. It just wasn't really for me. Although it's really pretty. I really like the cover. Uh, Red Rising Trilogy, because how can I not? And, oh, these are my two marble dice. They're, like, they're pretty heavy. You, you would never want to roll these um, as dice. I got them when I was in uh, Pisa way back in the day. When I was a teenager, I took, like, a big Europe trip. So Pisa is very well known for their marble. That's what there's. That's where those are from. Moving down to my uber nerd shelf. <laughs> Most of these books I bought while I was doing my English literature degree. So yeah, they're really nerdy and a lot of them are very old. Well, not the books themselves, just the, the writing in them is old. So, oh my God, I have to talk about the Fairy Queen. Um, one second. So while I was doing my English degree, I swear, like, every professor that I had was in love with this book. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, like, kind of a lesser-known classic. This is actually an epic poem. It's one, this whole book is one poem. And it's actually broken up into six or seven books. I don't really remember. And it's written, I think it was actually written in, like, the 1500s sometime. But it's written in, uh, in the language from like a couple hundred years before that, like the 1300s or something. Yeah, there's a term for that. I don't really remember it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's really hard to read. It takes a long time to get through. Um, and like half of every page is just footnotes. Like this is the actual verse. And then below that line, this is all footnotes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like... 50% footnotes trying to read through this stupid poem. I didn't mind it, actually. Um, and thankfully, I had, like, three different classes talking about it, so I had, like, a lot of opportunity to get used to reading it. So I guess that's good. I'm just going to try and read it like a normal person. There's a lot of letters in here that are sort of switched, like a lot of the Vs make the sound of a U, and a lot of the U's make the sound of, the, of a V. So, let me read a little bit. She then the city sought from gate to gate, and every one did ask, did he him see? And every one her answered, that too late he had him seen, and felt the cruelty of his sharp darts, and what artillery. And every one threw forth reproaches rife of his mischievous deeds, and said, that he was the disturber of all civil life, the enemy of peace, and author of all strife. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. So, yeah, that's Edmund Spencer, the Fairy Queen. Okay, moving along. Next we've got Paradise Lost by John Milton. I took an entire course on John Milton, and we spent like half the course just talking about Paradise Lost. It's a really fun, interesting 
old story. You'll kind of see a theme as we go through my uh, shelf of school books. I really was drawn to the oldest possible writing that I could <laughs> that I could access. Um, I really like ancient stories. Like, I mean, how much older do you get than uh, Adam and Eve, right? <laughs> Next, we've got the Canterbury Tales, um, kind of you know a English majors English majors rite of passage. <laughs> Uh, Yeats's poetry, um, that was fun. What rough beast makes it something to Bethlehem to be born, etc. Uh, T.S. Eliot's complete poems and plays I purchased myself in high school because I was pretentious and, I don't know, I liked how dark it was. Um, but it also has Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, which, um, let me get this back in here. Yeah, in case you didn't know, the Broadway musical Cats and the terrible movie <laughs> that I'm sure you've heard of um, is based on T.S. Eliot's book of Practical Cats. Very, very loosely based on because um, the, the book doesn't really have a, a narrative. It's just a collection of poems. Um, Ayn Rand, The Fountain Hand, because again, in high school, I was kind of pretentious. Um, <laughs> some poetry here, Seamus Haney's Open Ground. I really love this, uh, collection. I really love Seamus Haney. A couple of classics I've never read. <laughs> the Odyssey, which is a kind of underappreciated Greek story, Greek tale. Everyone knows the Iliad. Not many people know the Odyssey, you know, in comparison. So... Next, we've got some plays, some, and I'm going to pronounce all their names wrong, probably. We've got some Aeschylus, some Sophocles, some Euripides, kind of your Greek trifecta. Uh, the Oresteia, interesting. Oh, yeah, and I, you can see I got all these from the, the university bookstore on sale because they were used. So they came with these lovely stickers. It just really adds to the overall aesthetic of the shelf, don't you think? Um, some Samson Agonistes, more Milton, more John Milton. And then we've got some slightly more modern plays, The Bald Soprano, uh, The Importance of Being Earnest, which I recommend reading. It's so short, um, and it's actually pretty hilarious. It's a, it's a funny play. Um, some Jean-Paul Sartre, who I can't pronounce because I'm only pretending to be able to speak French. Um, <laughs> I'm Canadian, but I can't actually speak French. So I'm Brian Friel, who is Irish, I believe. Translations was really interesting. Um, oh, if you really want to seem pretentious, buy a book of Pinter plays, by, plays by Harold Pinter. That'll really up your pretentious ante. Some Chrétien de Troyes, Arthurian romances. That was super fun. Again, as you can see, I'm drawn to the the oldest stories possible. And got some George Orwell. Haven't read Animal Farm yet because I I know it's going to be really dark. Although I did read All Quiet on the Western Front, was, which was um, really sad. Oh, I want to talk about this one. So this is actually The Great Gatsby, but it's also got some Korean uh, vocabulary in it. Let's see if I can open it up for you. So this, the actual book is in English, but then it's got a bunch of little asterisks on each page, and that takes you to the bottom of the page where you can see how to say that word in Korean. And I can read Korean mostly, so let's try one. <laughs> let's try um, intimacy. Chinmilam. That's kind of a hard one. Uh, commotion is sodong. Tiptoe is... Belgetero Quatta. Something like that. Anyway, probably won't learn a whole lot of Korean <laughs> reading that book, but hey, you never know. Um, Quiet by Susan Cain. Fantastic book. Really confirmed the fact that it's okay to be an introvert and that you can actually contribute a lot to the world by being an introvert. Um, 12 Rules for Life, that was interesting, Jordan Peterson. Okay, 
Now for my final shelf, which is just sort of what was left over at the end, and I think it's ended up being mostly fantasy books. Oh, I've got this actually, um, fun fact, for the first, well, fun fact about me, I guess. For the first two years of university, I studied kinesiology, and out of all of my kinese textbooks, I kept this little, like, um, addition to my nutrition textbook, and I also kept this lovely guy that's got place of pride on the floor with huge dust bunnies, uh, which is my anatomy and physiology textbook, which I found super interesting personally. Ooh, the skin one's kind of icky, which I found super interesting personally. Some people look at it and think it kind of looks sort of gross, but anatomy was my favorite class to take out of all my kinesis classes. Obviously, I didn't have a whole lot of favorites in the kinesis program because I left the program and went and studied English instead. <laughs> yeah, so I've got that. Uh, then, oh, I forgot I even had these. Again, when I was in high school, I really liked, you know, dark things. So, Cyanide and Happiness uh, books of comics. It's very dark comedy. Then we've got my complete guitar manual so that I can pretend that I actually know how to play guitar, which I, I never really look at. I've been pretending to play guitar for a good 15 years now, so, you know, I don't need to actually look at it. I just need to, you know, have it since I'm only pretending to play guitar anyway. <laughs> we've got the inheritance cycle, which um, I just sort of had to keep. It's like another childhood thing, you know. Got some V.E. Schwab. It's always good for just a fun, quick read. And then Game of Thrones. And these are all actually my husband's books. He owned them when we moved in together. And yes, it bothers me to no end that we've got three paperbacks and one hardcover. I, yeah, that's why it's on the bottom shelf, because that way I don't have to <laughs> look at it and be triggered by that. Um, I think I have some bonuses for you. My Harry Potter I took out for my Harry Potter video, so they're just all on that side table there. I've got a huge stack of random library books, and yeah, I've got like a bonus little tiny collection over on my mantelpiece here. So we've got Lord of the Flies, which my friend in high school actually gifted to me. It's the 50th anniversary edition. It's so beautiful. Again, in high school, I loved dark things. <laughs> um, I've got a Bible with my name um, in bossed on it, or what's that called? Inscribed, or whatever. Um, my grandma, she she's very religious, and she gave all of her grandkids a Bible with their name on it. It's leather bound, it's got the gold leaf pages and everything. It's a very nice Bible. And she gave it to me, so I keep it. This is a really neat little book. I was admiring it one day when I was at my parents' house years ago, and my dad let me take it home. This is a Norwegian prayer book, from what I understand. It's all in Norwegian, and sadly, I speak absolutely zero Norwegian. But I think it belonged to my grandparents, and it's got daily prayers. I think there's Morgan and Uften. It's like morning and afternoon or evening, and it's like a specific prayer that you do. Um, if there's any Norwegians watching this video, let me know if I'm right about that or if I'm actually showing you something that's really inappropriate because I wouldn't really know the difference. I've also got the Tao Te Ching because I just really, whenever I need to calm down, this is a good thing to just sort of pull out. It's not a fancy copy or anything, but the, the content is pretty similar regardless of which copy you get of it. Different translators, but. Uh, the Lays of Marie de France. Again, these are some school books I had. But I really enjoyed all of these, actually. Le Mort d'Arthur is The Death of Arthur, and it's kind of tales, Arthurian tales. Um, I don't know if Arthur's even in most of them. I don't remember a lot from it, but I did enjoy them. And the Lays of Marie de France, a lay is like a short, like a fable, but for adults. And I don't remember any of them, but they were actually pretty interesting to read. Um... I think they're French, maybe. Anyway, 
Yeah, they're like short fables that all have a moral at the center of the story. And there's like people morphing into animals and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, those are super fun. So that concludes my bookshelf tour. Please let me know if you've read any of the books that are on my shelf. Let me know what you thought of them if you have. And like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Hope you have a great day. Bye. Oh, let's check out the pumpkins. Not bad. Where's the other guy? It's getting there. Still lots of time to grow. Got some little ghosty gourds here. Another one in there. This one in there. buddy. Hey, cutie pie.